Well, the Coronado Island Film Festival gearing up for its eighth season starting November 8th. You can join over 120 filmmakers. One that really stood out to me personally, The Big Dump, all about the sewage crisis in the South Bay. Joining us live here to tell us about The Big Dump, we have Brett Davis and Larry Del Rose. First, though, before we talk to you both, gentlemen, thank you for joining us, by yeah. the way. Uh, we do want to get a quick look here at the trailer so people oh, can great. get an idea of what to expect. Why are the kids playing in the sand? Why are they in the water? Why are kids surfing in sewage? The visitors are not aware of the sewage crisis. People have already gotten severely sick. What's it going to take? That's why I'm calling for a state of emergency because we're done waiting. We're done. The patience is run out. My community is suffering. My community is in pain. We're getting kids getting sick, not just from entering the water, but, but breathing the pollution. Um, the, the, the situation is at a crisis level. Oh yeah, so uh, we've covered this for decades, it seems, but the past couple years, it's gotten worse and worse. Mayor Aguirre is in your film. Uh, you're seeing people swimming in this polluted water. So let's talk to you gentlemen uh, about the inspiration, why you chose this topic of the sewage. Uh, let's start with you, Larry. Well, I think because I live 70 feet from the water, mm -hmm. I get up every morning and I'm depressed just seeing it out there. Yeah. When we started, we trended lightly because we didn't know how the public would take this if they would be mad at us. Mm -hmm. So even since we've done this work, uh, it's getting dire. We need to notch it up even more because now it's getting to be a health issue. Before, our film was just to inspire action and to tell the people the health, health issues right now at the beach, mm -hmm. but now it's getting beyond that. Mm -hmm. We really need to do a number two and right. give them, you know, another version of it, which is more intense. Mm -hmm. We trended lightly on this one, actually. Okay. Yeah, there's more to it, right? There's so many as you learn more and more about it. So much unraveling with it. Uh, Brett, I heard your voice as the narrator in this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very uh, unique voice. <laughs> yes, yes, it stands out. But I want to talk to you about in the process of putting this all together. Uh, what stood out to you the most? What shocked you the most about what's happening in the South Bay? I think what shocked me the most was recently is that UCSD has come out with the fact that now they're investigating more of an air quality issue. Mm -hmm. And not just in the in the South Bay, but also on windy days, this is going throughout San Diego. Mm -hmm. And there's also a report by some doctors in the Imperial Beach area that um, I'm sure we talked about a little bit earlier right. that have seen an increase on rainy days uh, of you know digestive yeah. issues. Uh, but also the thing that we're not really hearing about is that last time there was a um, call to action when they had to boil water mm -hmm. when we had that so-called big storm that was coming into San Diego. Yeah. Well, over 50 people uh, apparently got sick and were hospitalized, but we're not hearing about those 50 people that got sick mm -hmm. and their clean water was uh, compromised. Yeah. And you hear the mayor talk about this a lot. She's really outspoken, willing to speak to anybody about it, saying that they're being treated like second class citizens. We've heard her say that on our air as well. Uh, this is a complicated issue, but also so important. I mean, it's crisis level, Larry. Yeah. Uh, what for you, as far as putting this film together? Well, we have a lot of sympathy like? for Imperial Beach. Yeah. They've been closed almost 700 straight days. Can right. you imagine that? Yeah. 700 straight days. And even though I live in Coronado, I have a lot of sympathy for them. We actually have a lot of sympathy for the people in Tijuana. Mm -hmm. We're not mad at them. Right. We're mad at Mexico. The but they're, they're victims too, mm -hmm. the poor people in Tijuana. Well, I have to say, actually, both governments have been dropping the yes, ball for years. Yes, both governments have. And when Newsom said that it was a national problem, he could have just said one more sentence, like, it's a national problem, but I will help you guys every day. I'm on your team. We're going to get this done. That's all he would have had to do. One more sentence. Right. And now we know Biden's putting in some money, $300 million, But as we even mentioned this morning, that's barely anything to help we heard repair that. and expand and all of that. This is, the fir this is the first time that we've heard um, actually somebody admit that it's going to require $1.5 billion. Because yeah. nobody's realizing that if you have to put $300 million, Mm -hmm. It's not taking care of the problem. Right. Um, we do have to go. I apologize. We're out of time. But this will be airing November 10th, 1 p.m. Friday. November I'm going 10th. to that, too. The well, big great. We look yes, forward to seeing you. Thank you very though. much for putting this together. Thanks okay. for your support. Of course. Thank, thank you, you very much for being here. We'll be right back with a quick check of your headlines.